Hello folks, and I guess you are as tired as I am of cutting sheet metal with a grinder or a jigsaw or even a hacksaw. And that's why a plasma cutter would be very handy. And what I have right here is a plasma cutter from Toolmania. A 60 amps plasma cutter from Toolmania. But before we start looking onto the device and before we test it, we have to have a little talk about plasma cutting and the technology used on those devices. In nature, we have four states of material, gas, liquid, and solid. And then the last one is indeed plasma. And plasma is air which is ionized, very high temperatures. You can compare it like a lightning bolt. That is basically plasma. And that's the technology which is used on a plasma cutter. So we're gonna need gas, and this is gonna be our shop air, and it's gonna be about six bar for this device or 90 psi that's about the maximum and the other part is power and it's the plasma cutter that will have to provide the power now the power is derived from an inverter this is an inverter type and an inverter takes the ac from the mains distribution net which is 220 volts on this case and it rectifies it to a dc current and that DC current is then fed through a transformer, but of course DC current doesn't work in a transformer, so they're chopping it up in very small pulses. And these pulses then are created at a very high frequency, and that's what makes that little transformer inside very efficient. Now the output of that transformer will then be rectified again, and that's gonna be your cutting current between zero and 60 amps. The device that is chopping up the DC signal or the DC current that you have from your mains after it's been rectified, that is what we call a solid state switch. And on the market, you have two types of solid state devices that can chop up that DC current. The first one is a MOSFET, and that's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And that one is really good and designed for high frequency switching. So a lot of pulses are chopping on and off uh, of the signal but it's not all that good for high power applications. And to be honest, this is a high power application, isn't it? The other type is an IGBT, isolated gate bipolar transistor. Now that one is designed for high power switching, ideal for a plasma cutter or a TIG or a MIG, but it's less good at high frequencies. Now the point is that you don't need a lot of high frequencies. So we are kind of okay with an IGBT solution. In fact, you want to have an IGBT solution, especially if you're gonna weld for prolonged periods or cut plasma for a long time at high power ratings. And that's why this Toolmania device here is actually using IGBT solid state switches inside. Now, other websites, they promote IGBT technology. There is no such thing as IGBT technology with MOSFET because that's often what you see. You're either IBGT or MOSFET, you cannot be both. So if you're going to buy one, look for an IGBT inverter. Those are the best ones and they will last a lot longer than the MOSFET based. The current that you're gonna to need to cut through the metal plate is gonna be determined by the setting on this knob. And you can adjust this. And all what this does is really adjusting the frequency of these pulses at the primary winding of the transformer. So, enough about technology, now you know. Go and look for an IGBT plasma cutter, take or make. And the Toolmania Cut 60 is an IGBT device. The Toolmania kit includes, of course, the Cut 60, which is your 60 amp IGBT plasma cutter. And it comes with a grounding lead. And this is a detachable one with a standard connection, which is really good, and the clamp. Now, the clamp is a bit on the weak side, uh, but then again, that's not a major thing because you can fit anything else on that, but we'll have a closer look on that in a few seconds. You, it also comes with your torch, and here is the torch. It has a very long cable with it, and it has two parts on it, the torch itself and a micro switch, which is mounted onto the torch. It may look a little bit weird, but there is a reason for that, because you can remove this and use a foot pedal. Some people like to use a foot pedal, and that's the connector actually for the switch. So if you hook that up to the Cut60, then you can control it with this switch right here. And for the rest, uh, you're gonna have a few extra tips because you're gonna burn through the tips. These are consumables, and again, I will have a look on that in a second. 
Another thing you're going to need, which is not included in the kit, is a water separator. Now this is a water separator that you can buy wherever you want to buy it, I guess, and maybe even they have it in Tulmania, I don't know. But it's important that you filter out the condensation in your compressed air before it gets into your cut 60. Because if the air gets in it, which is having condensation in it, it, you're going to wear out these tips real quick. So you don't want that to happen. So I recommend to get a water separator. But again, that's not part of the kit. So now let us have a closer look on the Cut60 itself. And then we look at the auxiliaries or the cables and the torch more in detail. So I plugged it in the mains and we powered it on. There's nothing to it. There's a switch in the back. So now let's, and I hooked up the air hose and we'll have a look in, in the back in a few seconds. And with this knob, you can actually regulate the pressure. See, you can increase it. I'm going to go to four bar or five bar. Six is the maximum. So do not put more than six bar into the device. That's the absolute maximum or about 90 PSI. And once you set your selected pressure, then you push the knob back. Now the pressure of air is very determining how good the cut will be and how deep the cut will go. So for thick material you need a lot of pressure, for thinner material you need less pressure. And by the way, you can cut with a plasma cutter any metallic uh, piece of material. It can be aluminum, it can be copper, it can be steel, whatever, uh, as long as it's conducting. And on the right we have a button where you can adjust the amperage. There's a display showing the amperage at 60 amps and we can go all the way down to 20. And then over here you have a small push button and I can push it once or twice. And I can't see, I don't know if you see the lights coming on, it says 2T and now it says 4T. 4T means that you have to click the switch on the torch and then you can let it go and the torch will burn and it will continue to burn until you click the switch again and let go again. So it's like a double action. A 2T option is you click the switch and you hold it while the torch is burning. And as soon as you let go of the switch, the torch will stop. These are the two modes of operation. It all depends on what you're used to, what you like. I typically run on a 2T mode. And on the bottom, we have the connectors. We've got the torch connection, which is really nothing more than power and gas. Then we have the switch control, uh, the switch coming from the torch, but you can also connect the foot pedal to this. And then we have the ground clamp to connect over here. And these are standard connectors, so you can use any ground clamp you want. Now in the back, you have your power cable, which is going to the mains, and I already have it hooked up. And you have the on and off switch. And then here you have a copper connector where you will hook up your compressed air. I already hooked up a little tube here, so I have a fast, quick disconnect cable. Uh, but normally you could do it the way you want to do it with a fast connect or no fast connect or just a fixed cable. That's up to you. And then of course we have the on and off switch and here you have to drain just in case you would have some uh, condensation inside. And all you need to do is turn it on and then hook up the compressed air. There we go. And in essence we are now ready to try it out. But before we do so let's have a look on the torch and the ground clamp and the consumables. So this is the torch and you have a cap that you can remove because you have to do that sometimes. Then you have kind of a nozzle and you can remove that nozzle and then you have the tip which you can also remove depending on how good you are in plasma cutting because the tip should not touch the working sheet or the working material. If it does it's going to wear out real quick so pay attention to that. But the good thing is, we have a bag with replacements with it. So you have an extra two tips. And then you can put on the parts again and the cap. And this is the micro switch on the torch, uh, the 2T or 4T operation. And you might wonder why it's strapped onto the torch handle. Well, the reason for that is that if it was integrated, it would be in the way sometimes if you use a foot pedal. Now that it's strapped on there, you can use it like this, or you can cut the tie wraps and get rid of it and use a foot pedal. In each case, this is the connector of that switch that goes to the front of the um, Cut60. So the ground clamp, I think the cable is a little bit on the short side, to be very honest. And the good thing is it has a standard connector, which is good. But the clamp itself, I think the touch contact is a bit small. It, you're only working on the edges of the clamp here on the teeth 
And even between the two, there's no connection inside. Typically, you would have a copper connection in the middle. So I think that's a bit of a negative thing on this. Uh, the clamp is pretty cheap, but then again, you can put any other one up. For the rest, I haven't seen anything so far, which is not good. And all of that comes with a little pouch where you can put all the stuff in. So, so far, things are looking pretty good. Um, I haven't seen anything really wrong. There's one area for improvement, I think, and that's actually the clamp, the ground clamp. But again, you can put any clamp on you want because it's a standard connector. And on the torts, I'm not going to say anything about the switch which is on the torts with tie wraps. Because for me, that's okay because I can easily take it off or put it back on, all depending if I want to use a foot pedal or not. So for me, that's good. All right, so let us hook it up and then we're going to do a test run. So let's put up first the ground clamp and the symbol is there, you can't really miss. Put it in there and twist, uh, it's keyed. Now we can hook up the torch, but first of all we'll hook up the foot switch and again uh, the connector is keyed, so make sure that you have it in the right direction. And then connect it firmly, don't over tighten it. And then finally we'll, we'll hook up the torch itself. And that's it, There's a, that's all there is to it. And in the back, we're going to connect the workshop here. Remember, six bar, 90 PSI max. So the first thing I'm going to test is a inox plate, which is about two millimeters thick, as you can see. And I clamped it in with a piece of wood so I can actually glide my torch along this piece of wood to have a straight cut. You don't have to do that if you have a very steady hand. But remember, the torch should not, the tip should not be touching the metal. It should stay away from it at least one millimeter. And I'm going to do this with about 35 amps and about five bar. So let's turn it on. And I'm going to set it to 35. And we got about five bar. That should be good. Now oh, maybe I do a little bit more. There we go, five bar. And now we are ready to go. A plasma cutter is going to produce a lot of smoke and a lot of fumes and a lot of heat and molten metal. So you have to protect yourself. A welding helmet is more than necessary. And the best thing to do is to get an automatic welding helmet that dims automatically to the right volume of light and a couple of very well built welding gloves besides a leather skirt or something like that, like I'm wearing, to protect yourself from all these sparks that may fly around. So, let's give it a try. I think this is a fairly nice cut, and in the back, there is not a lot of it, see, it's almost nothing is on it. So this is good, this is cutting really nice. Now we're going to try a piece of aluminum, I think it's aluminum, and the thickness is roughly about 3 mil. Let's see how that goes, that should go very smoothly. I didn't clean up anything, I just leave it as is, it's even a little bit dirty or greasy. So let's try that and see how that works. I'm not going to use a guide for that, I'm just going to cut freehand and let's see. And we're going to be using the same settings, 35 amps, about 5 bar. And let's see how good this is going to work. Let us now try to cut through a 11 millimeter thick piece of steel. I'm not sure if that's going to work. I'm going to do it freehand and let's see how it goes. So um, I'm going to crank it up to 50 amps. So we're getting near to the maximum power level and we're still going to blow at about 5 bar.
even that cut was working through 11 millimeter steel. Uh, I know it's not a very clean cut, uh, but that was just me not being able to cut straight. I should have used the guide. And at the end, actually, I had my fuse blown on me again, my mains fuse. So if you're going to cut thick metal at 40, 50 amps, make sure that you have a strong enough fuse and you have no other consumers on it, like in my case. But this worked out pretty well. So folks, my final conclusion is that the Cut60 is doing a really good job at high and low power settings. Um, I found out that 35 to 40 amps is a good setting with about 4 to 5 bar. But you got to find this out yourself. You need to try this on a, a few times. I've, I've been cutting aluminum, I've been cutting steel panels, and we've even been cutting a very thick steel panel, which is 11 millimeters and hard steel. Uh, and that worked even fine. Yes, I know I didn't have a straight cut, but that's just because of the guy who can't cut straight. Um, and of course, my fuse blew at the end. So if you're going to use this device, make sure that the fuses are rated high enough so that they don't blow halfway the job like I had. But for the rest, there's nothing wrong with this tool. So I think this is a good buy. And it is IGBT technology because I actually had it opened up and I verified the semiconductors inside to make sure that they were IGBT switching devices, and they are. And I hope that you will enjoy your plasma cutter as much as I do. Bye-bye.